In this lesson, I'll show you how to find the velocity and volume flow rate of water leaving a hole. Just think of a tank and pretend that there is a hole on the side of the tank. We are looking for the speed at which the water flows out of that hole and the volume per unit time. And the question reads, a cylindrical container of radius 20 centimeters contains water to a height of 3.0 meters. Two meters down from the water level, there is a hole 0 0.50 centimeters in radius. Find the velocity and volume flow rate of water leaving the hole. What is the shape of the stream and where does it strike the ground? So we have several things that they are asking us to answer here. The very first one that we will focus on is the velocity at which the water flows out of this tank. So to do this type of problem as we've done in our previous video, we have to use the Bernoulli equation. And in our previous video, we looked at the speed in which water flows out of a tank that has a hole at the very bottom. But the same principle applies. So let's quickly look at Bernoulli's equation. We have the pressure at the top here, plus the potential energy per unit volume, plus the kinetic energy, this term, per unit volume. And that's at the top of the container and the right side of the equation references those three things over here. Now, since both the fluid coming out of the hole and at the top of the container are open to the atmosphere, the pressures at these two points will be the same. So P1 and P2 can be canceled out of the equation and we don't have to worry about that moving forward. Furthermore, we can say that because the hole is so much smaller, the area of the hole is so much smaller than the area of the top of the container, so I'll write down a sub 2 is much greater than a sub 1, the speed at which the water descends from the top will be almost negligible compared to the speed at which the water flows out of here. Therefore, we can say that V sub 1 is equal to 0 meters, and the justification of this assumption will be shown later on. So just keep that in mind for now, V sub 1 will be set to meters per second. And what that does is it makes this term go to 0 because anything times 0 makes 0. I'll take the height over here, H sub 1, as equal to 0, and the height over here, since it says in the question, 2 meters down, the height over here will be negative 2.0 meters. Therefore, it makes this term go to zero as well, because anything times zero, since h sub one is set to zero, makes that zero. So our equation actually boils down to zero on the left side is equal to these two terms. And if you solve for v sub two, you should end up with this formula, we just called the Torricelli equation. And I showed how to solve for V sub two in that previous video, which is linked on your screen. So feel free to go back to that if you want more details. I'll be using this formula, V sub two is equal to the square root of two times the acceleration due to gravity. That's a constant there at 9.8 meters per second squared, multiplied to the difference in height and the difference in height from the top to where the hole exists is two meters. So I'll multiply everything here by two. The square root of four, since two times two is four, times 9.8 equaling to roughly 6.3. So 6.3 meters per second is the speed at which the water exits this container. Now we're also looking for the volume flow rate and the formula for that is the area at which the water escapes this tank times the velocity, which we found over here, 6.3 meters per second. Therefore, we have to find the area of this, and we know the radius of that hole, it's 0 0.5 centimeters. I'll make that into meters so that everything is consistent. So dividing that by 100 gives us 0 0.0050 meters. The formula for the area of a circle is pi r squared. So pi times 0 0.0050 to the power of two will give us the area which we plug into there to find the volume flow rate. Pi times 0 0.0050 to the power of two, that's the area of that hole times the speed of 6.3, and 
and the volume flow rate is 4.9 times 10 to the power of negative 4 meters cubed per second. So remember the units over here would be meters squared. Multiplying meters squared with meters makes meters cubed per second. All right, so that answers the first section of this question. The second part of this question says, what is the shape of the stream and where does it strike the ground? Just from this illustration alone, we can get the idea that the stream will take the shape of a parabola. And if the stream takes the shape of a parabola, we have to refer back to our projectile motion formulas to help us with this next part. So here's an illustration of what's going on. I'll create an XY plane like this. And the point at which the water flows out of the container will be at the origin. Okay, so that's the Y axis and that's the X axis. And what you see on your screen as well are some projectile motion formulas that will help us answer this part of the question. So just ignore that for now. And the motion at which the water takes on will look like a parabola. It will be parabolic and the initial speed along the horizontal V sub X is 6.3 meters per second. And that's also the same as the initial speed. So using the formulas that are on your screen, we will start to fill in what we know. We know that the acceleration along the X axis is equal to zero. V sub X is equal to 6.3 meters per second. And X, which is the distance that this stream travels, and that's what we're looking for, is equal to these two factors, which is equal to V sub X. So 6.3 meters per second times the time. If we can find the time and substitute it into this equation, we can find the distance that this stream travels. Okay, in this column over here, we have A sub Y is equal to negative 9.8 meters per second squared. V sub Y is equal to, this first term becomes zero. Because in order for this equation to hold true, where V sub X is 6.3, the angle here has to be zero. Therefore, if we place zero in for sine, that makes this term go to zero. So V sub Y is equal to negative 9.8 meters per second squared times t. And for this last equation, this term goes to zero, and we're left with negative half times 9.8 meters per second squared times t to the power of two. Now what we will substitute in for y is very important. Remember that the hole occurs one meter above the ground. So the distance at which this stream will travel will occur when y is negative one. Zero and zero is the starting point. Negative one will be the end point since that's the ground, one meter down. I'll substitute that value in for y. We have negative one is equal to negative 0 0.5 times 9.8 meters per second squared times t to the power of two. So let's use our calculator. We have negative and negative on both sides, those cancel out. So one divided by 0 0.5 times 9.8, and then we will square root both sides to isolate for t. So square rooting the value that was on our screen gives us roughly 0 0.45. It takes 0 0.45 seconds for that water to reach the ground. And now taking this value, and putting it in for t here, we can actually find the distance. So 6.3 times the value that was on our screen gives us 2.84 meters. I'll just round to 2.8. 2.8 meters to the right in which that water initially escapes. Now I also said earlier that I would prove to you that V sub one being equal to zero meters per second is a good assumption to make. And I can prove that by using the continuity equation where A1 times V1 is equal to A2 times V2. We already found A2 to be that expression and the velocity 
we found was 6.3. The initial velocity is what we're looking for. Remember, we set it equal to zero. That was our assumption. And the area at the top, the area at the top is 20 centimeters in radius. So I have to make that into meters. We have pi times 0 0.20 to the power of 2. Solving for v sub 1 should give us an idea as to why setting v1 equal to 0 at the beginning was a good idea. So pi times 0 0.0050 to the power of 2 times 6.3, that's the right side of the equation, divided by this factor. Again, pi times 0 0.20 to the power of 2 makes a velocity of 3.9 times 10 to the power of negative 3. To put that in perspective, if we were to set up a ratio here and I divided both sides by this factor, dividing this side as well, so 6.3 divided by what we just found. The speed at which the water is flowing out of that hole is 1,600 times greater than the speed at which the water descends from the top. So the assumption that we made at the beginning was a good one. And there you have it. Now you know how to find the velocity and volume flow rate of water leaving a hole.